So what I'm going to do today is show you some painting miniatures that we can use that are Club 304 property. And again, we use the 3D printer. Again, that was all provided through a grant. And what we're able to do is 3D print. Now, I'm going to go ahead and show you the process for this first and what it looks like prior. Because a lot of kids ask me like, hey, can you print me this or can you print me this? And I don't think they understand that there is a bit of work that goes into it. So here is, this is called Cura. It is a free program. And there's a lot of stuff that I need to do into Cura before I can just click print. It's not like a basic printer. You still have to do some um, some Tinkercad or AutoCAD, if you will, uh, work. Now, Tinkercad is another website. I know some of you have learned, and I've showed it to some people, where you can actually manipulate objects and add bases and things. Um, now, this is just a simple minifigure that I got off of a website that is called Thingiverse, which has a bunch of free uh, STL files, which are what we can print. Now, if I look here at this, everything looks good. It looks pretty simple, but there's a lot more than just printing. So when you see this, it's actually not going to print like this. Anywhere that is red, see all these red areas? That means it's not going to print. Or it means that it will print, but since there's nothing underneath it, the printer is just going to drop filament, which is like a melted plastic. And since there's no base there, it's just going to fall into the air. So what happens is we need to build supports. And that's where things get really tricky. Because a support is, for one, it's necessary, but two, sometimes there's too many. So if we go to, now I've already prepared this, so I'm going to show you what it looks like. Now this is what it would be when it prints. And you can actually see here um, the blue area, that is all extra print. So again, if you look here, this actually shows me uh, as, well, the computer's slowing down. But this actually shows me it's going to look like this when it prints. So let's take a look here. So this is uh, the guy that we were just looking at, and he did not print very well. That's the other thing is you'll notice there's some major, um, I used hot glue there because it just didn't hold up. The arm broke. This arm's super thin. He's just not a great print. Now, again, if we maybe if I went in and spent more time with this, I could do that. But most of you aren't that familiar with using the program. This guy, on the other hand, um, he was much more stable to print. So again, you can kind of see like his legs for one. The the thing that um, drives me nuts is when people create these, because again, somebody designed this. Um, but when they did it, the legs on some of them and again this one you can see where i kind of fixed it there's hot glue that's what that is but some of them the legs or the joints of the arms are so small that printing them on a mid-year scale like this i mean they're just they're not going to work they're bound to break um whereas this dude came out real nice because he is you know everything on him is nice and thick it works really well now this guy actually looked like this so you can kind of see him there. Here, I'll hold a little better. You can kind of see him there and where he comes out. And you can also see where all the supports are. And again, the supports become, again, they're necessary, but sometimes they're problematic. Because when we what we have to do is we go in here and we just start kind of pinching them off. And again, what I can do here is I, I just start peeling them off. But, but it is plastic. Now, the supports are made, um, I use zigzags. There's also straight lines. There's all sorts of options. Now, these are kind of like tin snips or um, wire cutters, but they're a little thinner for the plastic. And basically what I do is I go around and you have to cut all of these areas. And basically by making it smaller, I can grab it and then it's much easier to grab and twist. So if I just twist it, and once you get it going, it'll really start coming out because it's not sealed together. Again, um, the computer, the program is smart. It knows you don't want this plastic touching it. But the problem is if I snapped that right there and the leg was really small, like this guy, it would simply break from the base. Now, again, I just wanted you to see this because a lot of people uh, have been asking me about miniatures and stuff. You guys are all playing D&D &D and that's awesome. Um, but just understand that there's a lot more to it than simply hitting a button and it comes out like this. That's maybe in the future. Um, but again, we're we would go around and you can actually see there's a, uh, can't quite see it on film. There it is. You can kind of see there's a gap right here. So again, it's not totally sealed. And we look for like the weak spots on the supports and we just kind of twist 
and it is a slow process where I just kind of twist like this. And when you're doing this, you also got to be careful because um, if you use something like this and pop a piece of plastic, it could hit you in the eye. So again, um, if you ever, if I print you something and you take it home to use needle nose pliers, you should be wearing glasses, some sort of safety protection for your face. Um, again, we don't want to have plastic hitch in the eye. And you can kind of see how I go around and I just break that out. And again, that's not his arm. See how it just, it broke clean out because it was the support. And in the program, remember I was showing you where the arm had red. So this arm would have been red because it's overhanging. And basically the computer or the printer prints from here all the way down to support it. And again, you can kind of see it's, it's starting to come along pretty easy now. And I just kind of pinch it out like this. Now, again, the easiest way to get this out if you're having trouble and you see it's hollow is you just kind of grab it where you don't, you know, you don't want to crush your guy, but if you grab the supports and crush them, see how that just, it just crushed, it will kind of roll out. Okay. Now, the next thing I want to talk to you about is we have some really neat tools that um, were done in a grant. Now, some, this one should have been primed. Again, they're always better to prime. And again, a primer coat is basically just a white and also the primer will help hide some of the lines you could also sand it but these are really neat things i like these so what this is is it's a little tool that allows you to kind of hold it while you paint okay and that's a nice thing um i don't actually usually use them because i've just become so accustomed to holding them as i go but that's it okay and that's my little warforged guy he's got red eyes and he's a little robot now Let's go ahead and this is my practice piece. So I just wanted to show you a couple things about the paint. We have some really good paints. Again, they were all provided through a grant that I wrote. And when you look at these paints, understand that they are not, um, they're not free, they're not cheap. Uh, so we use a small amount at a time. And we are using uh, Army Painters War Paints. They're really, really good. But you gotta make sure to shake these up, okay? So again, every time you use one, you're just gonna shake it up. And then I like to use foil because it doesn't absorb the paint. It'll still dry out. But when we paint with these, it's going to just be a dab, little dab of paint, like that much. Again, you can see my hand compared to that. It's like nothing. But again, this is a very small thing. Now, we have brushes. But normally, when you guys think of paint brushes, you think of this. So this is some watercolor brushes and some flats. Um, these are not ever going to work for this okay it's it's way bigger it's almost the size of his entire body so what i did is i again ordered these and this is a extremely small almost hard to see on the camera brush the army painter uh, kit came with this and again if we compare them to his body they're the, the big one's pretty big now this would be fine for like a wash again just like in watercolor and i'll get to that in a second um, now when we paint, all I like to do is I kind of keep my hand steady like this. I load up my brush with some paint and then wherever we want to paint him. So let's just make his shoulder blue here. I'm not actually painting. What I do is I kind of dab it like this. <clears throat> and when I dab it, I can move the brush just ever so slightly. And I just work in a small area like that. And again, one of the main things I'm doing is I'm keeping my hand on the table this hand is also on the table. I'm not holding it in the air and moving. If I keep my hands planted, it's gonna be much easier to paint. And you can see how easy I can get in there. I'll move him so he's not hidden in the foil. And I just kind of add paint like this. Now we wanna work in layers and we wanna make sure to let it dry before applying another coat. Again, if you're doing something like this where you didn't prime it, it's going to take a lot more coats to be bright and vibrant if you want. Now, most D&D settings aren't super bright and colorful. They're more grungy and, you know, fantasy settings. So one of the things that we do is oftentimes we'll do a wash over top of the item. Now, a wash simply is, uh, basically, it's a very fluid. This is very non-fluid, but it looks like I've hardly used any of that, and I painted all of his shoulders. Okay, see how easy I did that? And again, <clears throat> here we'll paint his sash here. It's not about painting like you think of as painting, like dragging the brush. It's more about like making dots, like I'm doing here, and just kind of moving the brush, very small strokes. Again, 
you can use the tool I showed you to hold it, but I really, I just like holding it in my hands. Um, if it's a big, if it's something that maybe is taking a lot longer, maybe I'd hold it in that so my hand doesn't cramp, but I'm pretty used to it. <clears throat> We've always painted minis by hand, so again, my hand's pretty steady. You may not have a steady hand though. Now the other thing, Okay, so again, you see all we're doing is a little bit of paint. And again, we've barely used any of that paint on here. So you just use a small bit as you go. Now, the last thing, again, we would rinse this brush. Um, any of the ones with a red cap, these, notice their difference. Okay, so this is a paint. This is a wash. It says wash right there. Now, a wash is like a watercolor wash where we would... Um, it would be very runny or watery, but the reason that it's kind of nice to use a wash is, and again, we're going to shake this first one. And there are other, so we have a strong wash, soft, a flesh wash. So again, it kind of gives it a grime or a textury. So there's a dark tone. So again, if it was really grungy, we'd use a dark tone. And I'm going to go ahead and just put a small drip here. Now, the wash uh, does go a little quicker than the paint itself, and that is because the wash is more liquidy. Now, I'm going to use this larger brush. It's going to absorb more of the paint, more of the wash. And basically, I'm not going to go over this paint because it's, it's still wet, but I'm, I did paint this chrome earlier just so you could kind of see the difference. So if I go over it, now again, I, this is, uh, I can't remember which one I just used, the soft or the strong. But all it's doing, and again, I'm not really going to like paint it in. I'm more going to touch this and let the liquid kind of run over it. And I'm going to go ahead and do the one leg here. And the silver is kind of tough because it's so bright. You can't really see it on the camera. Yeah, let's use a little more. And you can see how quick the wash went versus the paint. So already I used all the wash, whereas the paint, I, it doesn't even look like I barely used any. So you can see right there, it's more of a, this is the dark tone. I did that so that you could really see the difference here. And again, I'm going to work that in. We don't want it to just sit there. I'm going to work it in. And the other thing I like to do sometimes with the washes is if I feel like it's too dark sometimes, what I'll do is take a paper towel um, and I'll just kind of dab this off to clean it. And then I'll lift, again, that's one of those painting words that you've learned in watercolors, uh, but I will lift some of the wash. But again, the wash is really good at, it builds up in like crevices and it kind of really helps highlight certain things. So here you can see where it's just looks metally. Here, it kind of looks more like an actual armor. So do you see how that, how quick that changed from the leg here, which just is flat, you know, metal to this actually looks like an antique uh, piece of metal. And again, that's done by using a wash. I think that looks really good. Matter of fact, my guy here, he's a little too bright. Let's see what happens. Maybe I can make him work with a wash. I might change my mind here. And again, the wash is so liquidy that if you really dislike it, you can uh, take a paper towel and just dab it off of there. But again, most of the time we do want to have more of a, you know, a darker look to our work. It also helps uh, to really hide blemishes, like mistakes. And again, you can see the leg here where it's very dark now. And again, it's a little shiny. Let's try to lift some of that. Too much liquid. And you can kind of see how the wash is making it go from this, where it's like pretty shiny, into more of like, you know, a darker design, which I'm not sure if I really like that. But looks like I'm doing it to the whole thing now because I started. Anyways, so this is all stuff that you have access to in Club 304. And I already painted a bunch, or sorry, I already printed a bunch of miniatures for D&D. &D. So the paints are here. You just need to get painting.